I came from a tradition of making pause tapes. If you heard of a piece, you'd have to record it, rewind it, get that piece back, record it, rewind it, get that piece back, record it, rewind it, get that, like, for hours and hours. So the SP-1200, once I saw that shit... Before I even get into the SP-1200, we need to get into the history of Robert Moog and the Moog synthesizer and the ARP synthesizer designed by Aaron R. Perlman and how they influenced these guys to create new musical machines. Now, Dave had been going to the University of California and they had gotten this Moog 12 system and he was analyzing it. He started getting good with patches and then he started creating better circuits within the system. He started building his own little boxes. So he's really into it at this point. And so Dave Rossman and his friend Scott Wedge wanted to create a company. It's called Emu Systems. Then Dave Smith from Sequential Circuits calls them about a new killer product. They want to develop a programmable polyphonic analog synthesizer, and it's called the Prophet 5. They help them, it comes out, it's a hit. And then a few years later, Dave Smith redesigns the Prophet 5 to use CEM chips, and he stops paying royalties to EMU systems. Now, the lack of royalties spurred EMU Systems to produce a new product, and they had new ideas. They're thinking digital sampling. So Dave Rossman checks out the Fairlight CM1, other digital audio computers, and soon Dave is improving on their designs with his own affordable digital sampler. At the 1983 NAMM show, they introduced the Drumulator their first drum machine. It's a big hit. They sell 10,000 of them in a year and a half. By the end of 1984, sales slip. Oberheim DMX is here. Roland comes out with the TR-909. Yamaha releases the RX-11. Sales are slipping, and now they need money. They're forced to borrow money from a distributor. But then the Emulator 2 becomes a hit. And Dave has a new idea for a new drum machine. They'll be using analog polyphonic synthesis and digital sampling to design one of the greatest drum machines ever made, the legendary SP-1200. Now you have to realize by this time, that Emu Systems is loathing the idea of competing with the Japanese manufacturers. They will get your device, they will improve it, make more, sell more, because they have a big manufacturing system, and Emu's quite small. And the Japanese manufacturers are really good at it. So Emu Systems decide to take the high road. They take the technology they used inside the Emulator 2 to design the SP-12. Now, it's a direct descendant of the Drumulator. Uh, let's be the first 12-bit drum machine. And we did a drum machine called the SP-12, which, which really drew its look and its interface from the, from the Emulator 2 style, and I've done the, the interface on that as well. But let's put the ability for people to sample uh, an, a sound or two of their own in it, so it had a, you know, a complete set of sounds as all drum machines did at that time in ROM, but we also put some RAM in that people could sample um, one or two drum sounds of their own to customize it. And this was a huge hit, but what people were telling us is, we want more memory, we want more of our own sounds. So we eventually uh, expanded that to the SP-1200, and what we did then was take out all the ROM and make it all RAM and put a little disk drive on it. Mm -hmm. um, so that it, and, and we delivered discs with sound. So if you wanted to use those stock sounds, you just put it in. But if you wanted all your own sounds, you had all the RAM for yourself. And what we saw people starting to do is sample not drum sounds, but instrumental loops, um, you know, sampling other records and the like. And it became one of the first big tools of the rap and hip hop world. Now, the underlying sampling replay electronics remained the same. But when you play back the samples with Emu System software, with its synthesis of digital sampling, it had its own unique sound. It starts to catch on. Rock and rollers like it. They can trigger the samples from triggers on drum pads. Songwriters and R&B acts can now create their own music in the studio without having a drummer. Rap producers loved it. 
hip hop heads loved it. It was so dope. You could create this boom bap sound that had the feeling of a real drum in the room. Lost professor taught me things that that got me to another level. The way he's truncated beats, he was like, and he was doing it almost like he was doing a magic trick. And I would just stare at him, just like, damn, how do you do that? He taught me how to take it to that level. And the SP 1200 had the littlest bit of sampling time, but I like the limitations so that you're forced to be creative with that little bit of time and still make an ill ass beat. Okay. What we had down here on the 950. Yeah, I sample some crazy sounding. Look, listen at that. Like just weird, weird sounding stuff. All kind of stuff, man. What we had all together after I finished with it. And then I'm going to set my tempo. My tempo is going to set to 101.2. Got my little metronome going there. I got my loop going on. It's pretty cool, right? As you can see, I'm in sequence, and this is 101.2. I'm gonna trigger the rest of my samples. I might wanna trigger like a little hi hat. So, I'm back and record here. I can maybe. Oh, I have a little bass line. That's right. So I'm using samples to actually make a little beat up, a little sound thing going on here. It's really cool. See that? It's a horn and flipped it a little bit. Now it's important to make sure the right quantize value. I want to stop this and make sure my quantize value is right. Now how I do that here is I'm going to check out to make sure I have the proper segment length and autocorrect. I'll press autocorrect. See it's here set to 8th notes. I want to move it to 16th notes. I'll press enter. We're good to go. I'll press chord. I'm ready for overdub now. Here we go. I'm going to record this now. Right there. right there. Now I'm going to record. In 1987, at the Summer NAM in Chicago, Emu Systems releases the SP-1200. It sells for years, until it's discontinued in 1990. Now, Emu Systems thought the product was out of date and unloved, but it was far from that. They hadn't done the real research. The SP-1200 had gathered a strong following in the hip-hop scene. 
Emu finally realizes that hip hop was getting big and everyone loved their machine. So in 1993, they came out with a cool black casing and modifications to comply with the latest electrical regulations around the world. Those production runs ran until 1998. Now, Emu Systems got sold to Creative Labs. And Marco Alpert came up with this idea to create a SP-1600. Plans were drawn up, schematics were made, it was ready to go. But they didn't want to do it. It was a mistake. So they ended it and stopped making SP-1200s. Now this does not stop the story. After 1998, the price of a used SB-1200 kept rising. It eventually got to cost $5,000. Then it got to six and $7,000 for an SP-1200. There was such demand to buy the machine that the ones that were out there were rising in value. Now, some 20 some odd years later, Dave Rossman decides to create the whole thing again, the same product, and it still sells today. That means between 1998 and 2022, Emu Systems could have made so many people happy to have their own SB1200 at a much better price and have that boom bap feel in their music. <laughs> 